of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Uh, today, uh, following the Sunday of Pentecost, which is the Holy Spirit, of course, uh, in filling the apostles, and in boldness they go forth, uh, preaching the good news that Jesus Christ is the Redeemer and provided salvation for all the world. So, the second, now this is the first Sunday after uh, Holy Pentecost. And it's called All Saints Day. We commemorate all the saints. So let me read a little bit and we'll, we'll see what, where we go with this. The descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost makes it possible for us to rise above our fallen state and attain attained sainthood, thereby fulfilling God's directive, 1 Peter 1.16, Be holy, because I am holy. Therefore it is fitting to commemorate all the saints on the first Sunday after Pentecost. So you think about, I think about, what's it take to be a saint? I mean, you think of these uh, the saints that have gone before us, uh, that have been canonized, I, I which one comes to mind is uh, St. Paisios of Athos, a uh, very humble man, uh, very full of the Holy Spirit, uh, like uh, St. Seraphim of Seral, uh, the same thing. Uh, he was so full of the Holy Spirit that his interviewer could not even look into his eyes. So what does, what does the word saint, what is the definition of the word saint? Well, it comes from a Latin word called sanctus. Now pay attention to this definition because it will apply to all of us. One who is holy, now what is holiness? Doing, saying, thinking, acting like God. That's holiness. Now, and you are set apart, or set apart for God's service. It is a person who is cooperated, that means synergism, cooperated with God's grace to the extent that his or her Holiness is beyond doubt. You know, so uh, we see some people, men and women, have gone before us, and and uh, maybe they weren't uh, sainted at the time they were alive, but uh, it comes after their their uh, repose. So the question is today: How do we how do we become saints? I, I think that's a, a good question to ask because. Uh, we're not going to live in these bodies forever. We're passing through. Uh, and while we're alive, uh, we have time to work out our salvation, as the scriptures teach us, with fear and trembling. So how do we, how do we uh, become saints? Another question, how do we live by faith to become saints? Remember, faith is pleasing unto the Lord, but fear is not. Fear uh, is of the enemy and faith in God Jesus Christ is pleasing unto the Lord so living by faith we see that definition in Hebrews it is the persistent willingness persistent willingness to receive the gift of God himself in Jesus Christ and receive that divine grace we read in John 17 that Jesus several times said that the world would believe that the Father sent him. And so everything boils down to, what are you going to do about Jesus Christ? You can't ignore that. Uh, he has made such a profound uh, movement in history that they split B.C. from A.D. So what are you going to do with Christ? What are you going to do when you stand before a holy Christ and he says, are you going in or out? Are you going to go into the abyss? Or are you going to be let into heaven? These are the things that are, are most uh, challenging for us in this in this world. Uh, even from this first century all, up, all the way up to now, there's really um, no difference. Uh, the world is the world. It does worldly things. But we are people of faith uh, have that, that sixth sense of being able to... Uh, inherit the kingdom of God. Can you understand that? We have been given that gift uh, of divine grace so we can work out our salvation with fear and trembling 
and be pleasing unto the Lord. Okay, one of the first principles of being willing to live by faith is be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Stand in the mirror and what do you see? Be honest. What do you, what do you see? I'm not talking about a physical mirror, but I'm talking about the spiritual mirror. You look, up, you look upon your spiritual in your spiritual mirror and you say, where am I? Where am I with Christ? Another step. I mean, these are self-examination things, you know. Uh, looking at the spiritual mirror and, and and being honest with yourself, where are you uh, in in this whole matrix of of following Christ? Another step is the willingness willingness to be uh, to live by faith. That we need to strive to live by the second principle that I'm talking about is having a teachable spirit. We don't know it all. And I know people that think they know it all, and they don't. They come up short. But we have to be teachable. We have to, uh, as the Holy Spirit is the teacher, and lead us into all truth, that we need to be in agreement with the Holy Spirit, as the saints were. Okay, as the saints were agreeable. To be teachable. Because if you're not teachable, there's pride. And if you have pride, that turns God off. But if you're humble, that's that's good. That's that, if you're teachable and are humble of heart, that's good. Another way of obtaining sainthood is to attend the divine services. The church has given us uh, these divine services as tools to help us inherit salvation. Now, if you don't want to be in church, well, then you're not going to want to be in heaven. If you don't want to be uh, in liturgy uh, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're going to have a real problem in heaven because that's what's going on all the time in heaven is the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. The tool that the church has given us is we call the sacraments. In the Greek, we call it the mysterion. It's a mystery. Uh, we, can't, we cannot in our finite mind describe or try and understand the mysterium of the church. It is something that we receive by faith. All the sacraments are very important. Some are only given once. But like confession and repentance is a repetitive, you repeat that sacrament of confession and repentance. And why? To prepare yourself for the sacrament of sacraments, the Holy Eucharist. When we receive the, the holy body and blood of Christ, we are uniting with Him by faith. We are truly in communion with the Holy Trinity. But you just don't come not prepared. Paul warns us of that. If you're not prepared, you get sick and die. It goes back to 1 Peter 1.16. Be holy for I am holy. And that's how you work it out is receiving preparing and receiving of the body and blood of Christ. So what would be the marks of, of sainthood? Holiness, what I said at the beginning, thinking, saying, doing, like what the Lord is saying, thinking and doing. That's not, that's, that's a simplistic definition of holiness. I want to get real theological here, but that is a real simplistic way. Humility. You cannot be a saint without humility. And all the saints exhibit, uh, heavy, have shown thanksgiving. So we got holiness. And always I think about St. Paisios. Holiness is humility, is thanksgiving, and doing the commandments of Christ with doing the commandments of Christ, which are many. You know, what are the, some of the commandments of Christ? Is love one another. Another commandment of Christ is feed the hungry. Another commandment of Christ is clothe the naked. Visit those in prison. Those are the commandments of Christ. Do you want to be a sheep or do you want to be a goat? We know what happens to the goats. They're cast out. But the sheep get to come in uh, into heaven. I close with this. Another mark of sainthood 
is in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. It talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if we, last week, we, we, we celebrated the Holy Spirit coming upon the apostles, and today we celebrate all saints, you think that they had fruit from the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance against such there is no law. So you think about, as I read that list of those items, those things have to be increasing within us. Do we love? Do we truly love like the Lord loved? A self-sacrificing love. Do we have peace from heaven or are we trying to get the peace from the world? Which is not going to happen. But Jesus said, I'll give you peace that the world cannot understand. Patience, long-suffering, having patience. It's tough. It's tough having patience. In gentleness, being gentle with one another. Goodness. And one of the high points is faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Meekness. You know, remember I said humility it is something God looks in a person. He looks for the, uh, the meekness. And then, of course, the temperance. And there's no law against all of that where we look at the we look at the law of Moses and we say, woe is me, I can't do it. But with the Holy Spirit indwelling you, you can produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit and be pleasing unto the Lord. And, and as your fruit matures and, and then you share uh, the, this fruit with, with your fellow man, you make a difference. And when you make a difference, they'll say, what does that person have that I don't have? And maybe I want that. It's like a lighthouse, you know. We have plenty of lighthouses along the coast. And those, and those beacons help ships get into safe harbor. Are we being that lighthouse for Jesus Christ that people are drawn to us because we are Christ-like? We have our work cut out for us. Uh, this is something that's going to take our lifetime to work on and not just uh, on Sunday morning uh, come the liturgy and then put the prayer, prayer book in the drawer and forget about it until next Sunday. No, that's we're supposed to be 100% God conscious all the time. If you're not, do an inventory. Go to that spiritual mirror and, and look into it and see where you are. Be honest with the Lord and uh, He'll help. He'll help you. He'll, He'll guide you through the power of the Holy Spirit. He'll guide you. And so I, I want to close with something kind of humorous here. In Star Wars, we have a little guy named Yoda. And he was a, you know, a Jedi Knight and all that stuff. But there's one scene where Luke, uh, his ship was in the swamp and it was sinking. And, and Yoda was trying to teach him how to, uh, how to levitate the ship out of the swamp. And then Luke said to him, well, I'll try. And Yoda says, no try, do. And that's what my, uh, my affirmation is to you today is, we don't try, we do uh, uh, those things that would bring us into sainthood. Because uh, this is eternal life we're, we're dealing with here. Eternal life is, is not just for a little while, it's forever. And, if, and, and so you're making choices to, in your lifetime where are you going to be in, with your eternal life? Because there, there's a day of reckoning. I think about Moses, I mean uh, Noah's ark. They laughed, they ridiculed him for being uh, obedient to God, but then they went into the ark, the animals went into the ark, and God closed the door. And I see that as the, when grace is over, because right now in the age of grace they say, well, uh, when the door of the ark is slammed shut and sealed by God, it's over. And if you're not in, you're out. And then that comes the judgment. And so that should be a, a fearful thing. You know, as we say, we come to Holy Communion in the fear of God with love and faith draw near. So do we fear God? Do we have that love? Do we have the faith? And if you can't, in, in, in Holy Communion itself, the body and blood of Christ, if you uh, don't have the faith to believe that that's really the body and blood of Christ, then don't come. Don't come. Lean on the Holy Spirit. Totally. He's
God has, Father has given us the Holy Spirit to lead us in all truth and help us develop the fruit that is so important for us to, to inherit eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.